Hello, my name is Duncan and welcome to one of my hot takes. This hot take is about the CODIT model of wood decay in standing trees. Let's get going. So briefly, I need to introduce you to the CODIT model, just in case you're unfamiliar with it. The acronym CODIT stands for the compartmentalization of decay in trees. Some academics argue that the model actually identifies, what it actually identifies is mechanisms that trees have that compartmentalize dysfunction, not decay, e.g. by stopping embolisms occurring in the vascular tissues of the wood. This is perhaps an important distinction that was not made when the CODIT model was first uh, proposed. First, I would highlight that the model is old, scientifically speaking. The initial work on this modelling was done in the 1960s. As many of you will know, Dr Alex Shigo conceived and advocated for this model of wood decay, and as with a lot of Shigo's work at that time, it was a uh, considerable improvement on previous knowledge. Um, second, the key concept of the CODIT model for this short hot take is that there are structures analogous to walls that potentially can find wood decay within a healthy standing tree. These walls, they're not actually walls, are typically listed in order of suggested strength from the weakest to the strongest wall. Wall one is any obstruction that might slow or prevent movement of the decay up and down the tree's stem or branch. These can consist of vessel ends, gums, resins and tyloses, which are balloon-like structures put out by the ray system that block adjacent dysfunctional vessels uh, and occur in quite a few tree species. Wall two is the annual rings within the wood that act to slow or prevent decay radially into or out of the stem or branch. Annual rings contain late wood, is denser than the early wood in trees and denser wood is generally harder to break down for decay agents than less dense wood. Wall three in this model is functioning medullary rays which act to slow or prevent decay spreading tangentially in the wood. I would note that this is not is only meaningful for living rays where rays have died further into the stem of a tree in the heartwood or the ripewood of the tree essentially been shown that dead rays are a common pathway taken by wood decay fungi to invade new areas of the wood. Wall 4 of the CODIT model is a thin barrier that forms on the inner edge of, of a wound that consists of parenchyma, living cells, before wound wood is formed uh, outside of that uh, layer to occlude the uh, wound. This is probably the most plausible part of the CODIT model as it's rare for wound wood forming around some mechanical damage to a tree to be affected by any decay caused by that damage. You mostly find that the wound wood is totally separated out by that little layer of parenchyma cells that uh, the decay agent can't get past. Hopefully for some, this is a useful but quick run through of the CODIT model. I would note that reaction zones can form in all orientations so they can act as part of walls one, two, and three within this model that's uh, recently been integrated by authors in the 21st century. This effectiveness, the effectiveness uh, of reaction zones, however, to prevent the spread of decay is moot, as several studies have found they're not effective barriers to wood decay fungi in a lot of scenarios. Indeed, one piece of work like that was done at Myasco. The image of this slide shows a conifer stem and what the CODIT model considers to be a compartment surrounded by those analogous walls one, two and three within the wood. Now there's something wrong with this concept which we'll consider on the next two slides. This hot take seeks to highlight that the CODIT model first generated over 60 years ago is wildly out of date and very ineffective for modern day arboriculture. Much research has gone on since CODIT was first conceived. And also I would add, the analogy of walls in the wood is not a good one. We might think of walls as conti contiguous structures, which means they carry on, there's no gaps in them. 
there's no holes in them. But three of the four walls of the coded model are not contiguous. Only the annual rings, the late wood, are in the form of a complete and contiguous tissue within the tree. But then again, some tropical and tropical trees do not form late wood at all. So if this was a fundamental barrier to decay progression, why is it that much timber from tropical trees is highly resistant to decay? It makes no sense. I've bullet pointed a few key aspects of more recent research that show how out of date the coded model is. For example, science has found other barriers to wood decay that are substantial barriers, such as reaction woods and functioning sap wood with 100% moisture content. That uh, you know these help to explain the pattern of development of wood decay in trees. The coded model also has a focus solely on what the tree is doing. It has no focus on what the decay agent is capable of or its strategies for colonising the wood of the affected tree, which uh, you know with further science have proven to be really quite sophisticated. Clearly, if you want to model decay, what the decay fungus, fungus is doing, what actions it's taking would be important. Further to this, work by many scientists have identified that fungi can lie latent within the wood of trees. This is often referred to as endophytic colonization, or the fungi that can act like this are called endophytes, meaning liking the inside. Consequently, decay in trees can be triggered by dysfunction occurring within the wood due to drought stresses, vitality decline, or water logging, and a lot of different stress stressors, rather than merely through the me mechanism of wounding to the tree's outer surface. This finding is very important, as such internally induced decay would not trigger the forming of what the Codic model calls wall four. If we're looking at a tree that's decaying as an arboriculturist, we probably want to form a prognosis, come up with what's going to happen to the tree structure over time. So we can say, you know, well, we need to do something about it. So we can just allow it to continue decaying. It's coping with the decay. You know, can the co tree cope with the decay uh, over a period of time? Will the decay actually cease because it runs out of resources and reaches the outer edge where there is functional sapwood it can't really colonize. So the, the coded model does not include the factor of time. It merely names four potential barriers within the wood of a tree that might stop the spread of decay, not how the decay might spread over time and at what speed within the tree. This omission makes the model really ineffective. The coded model has was not based on quantification or, or measurements of decay. Rather, it was derived solely from repeated observations. Um, I mean, one example of quantification would be this size of wound in this type of tree, what sort of level of decay to get after 10 years. You know, this, you know, in comparison to a much smaller or much larger wound in the same type of tree over 10 years, what extent is the difference? What's the difference? That work was never done. As a consequence, there's no part of the CODIT model that allows prediction of decay progress or decay cessation. Again, this means it cannot be used to generate a prognosis what is likely to happen in the future for a tree with some decay present within it. Of all the scientists that have continued to add to our knowledge of wood decay and how much more complex it is than what the CODIT model would, uh, you know, in this says about it, uh, it is Professor Lynn Boddy that deserves a special mention here. Her work with Andrew Rayner in the 1980s highlighted that functioning sapwood at the outer edge of trees is a substantial barrier to wood decay progress, and she's championed an understanding of fungal bacterial communities in wood, succession in the decay process, as well as experiments proving that wood decay fungi can be endophytic. Her recent book on this topic is an excellent if a rather academic source of information on how wood decay agents really act on trees. Now there is a lot more that could be said on this topic, but then it would not be a hot take if it were not a, a brief talk, a brief jolt to the system. If you want to follow up on this topic, I have co-authored a journal paper about how decay in standing trees should be taught to students 
which I'll make available to you on canvas on this canvas site. The image on the slide is from that paper showing a section of birch stem and its rays. Then just isolating the ray system in the secondary image, it shows that the rays do not form contiguous walls. Rather, they're separated out and radiate out a bit like the uh, spokes of bicycle wheel. Uh, in disparate ways, little then stops a decay agent from weaving underneath or above these living rays to reach other tissues rather than having to go through them and attack them. OK, so what have we learned? Although the ACODIT model is what is still taught in many institutions on the most forestry and arboricultural courses, it is a model that is woefully out of date and now really could be considered very ineffective. Who can use it to say this is what's going to happen to the tree? You can't. You can't use it that way. As an industry, it is time to move on. Naming a few barriers to wood decay in a tree, some of which are not very effective as barriers, is never going to tell the whole story of how a wood decay occurs in a tree. The analogy of walls in the wood also doesn't carry much muster. Yes, denser wood is harder to decay in general, but the coded model has not picked up on all such barriers, nor does it make clear that most of these structures are not contiguous, meaning decay agents can work around or through them. The coded model could be improved to some extent by taking into account other proven barriers to decay within a tree, but still, this would not be enough for the model to become effective for modern practice. What we need to develop is a quantitative model of wood decay, like a region growing model that incorporates the factor of time and also takes into account how the specific decay agent can act within the wood, or it tends to act. Only with such factors included in the model for tree decay can a meaningful prognosis for a de decaying tree be developed. We are still quite far from that sort of a model. We now have the instruments needed to follow the progress of decay in trees without destruction, for example, tomography and x-rays. Three images here show decay patterns in semi-mature trees that have been wounded mechanically on their outer edge. Image A shows a decay pattern that in part seems to fit the CODIT model. There were distinct reaction lines um, along the transits where rays, wood rays would have formed the decay has passed several annual rings to reach the centre of the tree, so it's not entirely fitting the model. Image B illustrates a decay pattern that does not at all follow the codic model. This decay is not stopping at annual rings, nor along the lines that represents the positions of the rays in this cross section. Image C is a great illustration of sequential, sequential reaction zones <laughs> over three periods of fungal process through the stem of this tree. However, Note how the decaying zones are like lobes extending out, like coffee stain on the tabletop, if you like, not at all fitting with the suggested walls of the CODIT model in any meaningful way. Well, thanks for listening to this hot take. I hope you found its contents of interest.